Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about sampling and sampling process. So, this is from Unit 5. This is my part 2 video. Already I have posted the introduction about sampling, sampling process and all in my part 1 video. If you have not watched that video, I have given the link of nursing research and statistics playlist in the description box, suggested end card and I card. So in this part 2 video, we are going to discuss about types of sampling. Under types of sampling, we have probability sampling methods and non-probability sampling methods. Exclusively in this video, we are going to see about non-probability sampling methods. So this video will be useful for BSc nursing, MSc nursing and post basic BSc nursing students. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the content what we are going to discuss in this video. As I have told you earlier, types of sampling we are going to see. Under types of sampling, we are going to see in detail about non-probability sampling methods or techniques. Let's see the types of sampling. So under sampling technique, as I have told earlier, you have probability sampling methods and non-probability sampling methods. So under probability sampling methods, you have simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systemic random sampling, cluster sampling and sequential sampling. So you have simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, systemic random sampling, cluster sampling and sequential sampling. Whereas under non-probability sampling, we are going to see about purposive, convenient sampling, consecutive sampling, quota sampling and snowball sampling. So under non-probability sampling methods what we are going to see? We are going to see purposive sampling, convenient sampling, consecutive sampling, quota sampling and snowball sampling. So in this video as I have told earlier we are going to discuss only with non-probability sampling techniques. In my next video I will be posting about sampling probability sampling techniques, non-probability sampling techniques. So here the researcher select elements by non-random methods. In this method the sample elements are arbitrarily selected by the researcher because in his judgment the elements thus chosen will most effectively represent the population. So in probability each and every sample has an equal chance but in non-probability according to the researcher's convenience according to his need he can choose the subjects so the in a class if I want to select 30 samples for my study whomever I wish to take or whomever I consider to be convenient so them I can take according to my choice but in purposive out of 50 students if I want to take 30 students I can take it by means of lottery method so that all the students will be having equal chance to enter into the study so this is in case of probability sampling technique which I will be posting the video later but here in non probability sampling technique according to the researcher's wish according to his convenience according to his uh, knowledge uh, whichever person is convenient for him for to be included in the study they can take it uh, according to their own choice so features in this technique the samples are gathered in a process that do not give all the individuals in the population equal chances of being selected if the if the participants are having equal chances then it comes of selection then it comes under probability but here all the participants are not having equal chance to get selected because the researcher is going to get determined whom he wants to select for the study. In this subjects are usually selected on the basis of their accessibility or by the purposive personal judgment of the researcher. Accessibility means according to convenience, according to whom the researcher can reach and easily then also based on the researchers personal judgment so this uh, candidate uh, will be very helpful for the research study like that based on the researchers personal judgment also he can select the subjects the downside of this is that an unknown proportion of the entire population is not sampled this entails that sample may not represent the entire population accurately so this entails that the sample 
may not represent the entire population so here see if everyone are having equal chances of entering and everyone are going to take from the uh, population uh, which is going to represent the entire uh, population so that is more accurate for the study so that you will be doing it in what probability sampling techniques but here what is the downfall of this study is uh, you are taking according to your own wish so it may or may not represent the uh, general population of the study uses so this type of sampling is more convenient it can be used when demonstrating that a particular trait exists in the population particular trait or particular feature or particular characteristics or particular behavior is existing in a particular population if you want to assess that can be done by this method of study it can be used where randomization is not possible where you cannot do random sampling that time you can go for this uh, non-probability sampling techniques it can be used when the researcher does not aim to generate results that will be used to create generalization pertaining to entire population so if if you don't want to generalize uh, the thing whomever you can take uh, according to that means you are not uh, it may or may not uh, generalize the findings to the uh, entire population it is also useful when the researcher has uh, only small amount of budget or uh, limited time or limited uh, resources uh, or workforce uh, to conduct the study means that time according to his or her convenience he can do the research by using non-probability sampling techniques which is very very easy compared to that of probability sampling technique purposive sampling so here we have seen so many types now under that one subtype is purposive sampling it is more commonly known as judgmental or authoritative sampling so purposefully you are selecting the subjects in this technique samples are chosen uh, by choice not by chance if it is by chance it comes under purposive so it is by means of choice according to the judgment of the researcher whomever the researcher likes or whomever the researcher wants to get involved in the study based on his knowledge and judgment he is taking the samples purposefully in this the researcher believes that some subjects are fit for the research compared to others that is the reason why they are purposefully chosen as subjects for example in a class of 50 students whomever the teacher likes and whomever the teacher likes to be some what intelligent or average students they will be taking that particular students for the research study like that so this is this comes under what purpose is sampling uses it is usually used when limited number of individuals possess the basic trait or characteristics so when you have, are choosing this thing you are choosing when a limited number of subjects are only having this particular thing then if the researcher knows a reliable professional that he or she thinks he is capable of assembling a representative sample and with whom the researcher has confidence based on his judgment and knowledge he thinks that this particular sample will represent the entire population that is what he or she going to reproduce okay so next is merits that is the advantages are simple to draw sample very easily you can draw the sample from the population useful in explorative studies so when you are doing some so many types of studies are there no experimental explorative descriptive like that for explorative studies this method is very very useful saves time money personal that is resources requires less field work okay easily you can select the subjects what are the demerits demerits means it requires considerable knowledge about the population and study so whomever suppose if i want to do some uh, uh, study uh, on uh, 50 members uh, of a uh, uh, class means i should know about each and every student clearly then only whichever student i am selecting uh, I will know whether that particular student will fulfill the criteria or uh, the basis of what uh, the research study is going to be. So it is not always a reliable sample. You cannot always tell that the samples you may think that uh, this girl will perform well or this student will perform well but it may not be so all the time. So sometimes the reliability of the sample is going to be in question. There is no way to evaluate the reliability of the expert or authority you can. It is very difficult difficult in non-purpose sampling uh, to assess the reliability already i have posted videos on reliability validity pilot study hypothesis assumption limitations you can watch our channel playlist 
for those videos it is usually biased since no randomization is used whoever i like if i am going to select whoever i am thinking uh, uh, that particular subject if i am going to include means there may be chances for personal biases uh, which can interfere with the study findings so this is with regard to purposive sampling next we will see convenience sampling in this the subjects are selected based on their convenience accessibility and proximity to the researcher whomever is very close to the researcher whomever the researcher can easily access access so that particular person they are taking the subjects are selected just because they are easiest to access okay and the researcher did not consider selecting the subjects that are representative of the entire population so you cannot say that uh, particular characteristics and all should be there in the population that and all you sample that and all you cannot see whoever is convenient for my study whoever is very near to me or uh, my neighborhood like that and all whoever i can access easily i am taking according to my convenience so that's why the name comes convenience sampling don't forget to subscribe users it involves the researcher to obtain a basic data and uh, trends for his study without complications so basic data or any changes easily you can uh, uh, take it from the subjects whoever is accessible it is also useful in documenting a particular quality of a substance that occurs with a given substance what are the d what are the merits it is considered easiest cheapest less time consuming so it saves your time money and personal or resources what are the demerits again sampling bias is there uh, it doesn't represent the entire population findings are generated uh, uh, you cannot generalize it for the uh, whole population next is consecutive sampling what is this consecutive sampling like uh, network marketing so it is similar to convenience sampling expect that it uh, seeks to include all accessible subjects as part of the sample so this technique can be considered as the best because it involves that all subjects that are available which makes the sample a better representation of the entire population so consecutive sampling it is also more or less like convenience sampling whoever is willing whoever is in that particular area you are taking okay so if i am taking from this house uh, the very neighborhood house i am taking the very neighbor whoever is uh, in a particular locality you are taking uh, okay based on your convenience so consecutive sampling merits there is very little effort on the part of the researcher when performing sampling technique again it is not expensive not time consuming and uh, since you are taking in a particular locality there will be more representativeness of the general population okay suppose if you are doing a study on uh, uh, chennai uh, urban or uh, uh, some where near uh, bangalore so here the particular locality has been selected and you are doing a study in that particular area means the findings what you are going to get now suppose if you are going to assess anemia on a particular uh, uh, village so uh, if you are finding that more people are having anemic means so you can tell uh, that the particular locality many individuals are suffering from anemia like that okay d merits the researcher has no set plans about the sample size or sampling schedule because here no whoever he comes no he is taking so there is no definite sample size or sampling schedule or technique like that and all so here it all it is it all, does not uh, guarantee the selective representativeness of sample sometimes you are telling th this will uh, generalize the findings but always you cannot tell that the findings can be generalized because one sample will be totally deviated from other sample it can be like that also okay so next is quota sampling so till now we have seen purposive sampling convenience sampling and consecutive sampling next is quota sampling so like uh, reservations and all we have some quota no for oc for uh, bc for mbc like that quota means what uh, some amount of quota you are giving uh, to the samples or subjects uh. so in this the researcher ensures equal or proportionate representation of subjects uh, depending on which trait is considered as the basis of the quota for example uh, suppose if i am going to do on nursing students uh, so first year i am going to take 20 sample second year i am going to take 20 samples third year i am going to take 20 samples fourth year i am going to take 20 samples like that you are giving some quota okay so user the sample allows the researcher to sample a subgroup that is of greater interest of the study so here you can compare uh, what uh, uh, what is the variation in first year second year third year fourth year like that and all okay if a study aims to investigate a particular characteristics of a certain group uh, this type of sampling is the ideal technique if you want to assess a particular trait or a particular feature or a particular characteristic you can go very well ahead with this 
technique next is it is also economically cheap no need to approach all the candidates suitable for studies where the field work is possible where you can uh, go to the natural setting and where you can uh, go to the community or wherever you can go and you can do means uh, you can use this quota sampling demerit is not possible to estimate uh, error bias is possible again and again sometimes uh, the subgroups may not uh, represent the population sometimes uh, they may have uh, too much of characteristics or traits sometimes the characteristics will be subtle or in the other way next is snowball sampling so everyone knows what is a snowball so if you are striking a uh, with the one ball all the things will be falling no so that game is called a snowball game so in this technique the researcher used to identify some potential subjects in studies where subjects are hard to locate such as commercial sex workers drug abusers etc so the process of snowball sampling is much like asking samples to nominate other person with the same trait so the researcher then observes the nominated subject and continues in the same way until obtaining sufficient number of subjects so suppose if you want to know about uh, who has recovered from drug abuse or who had recovered from drug abuse by going to alcohol uh, on drug de addiction centers so you can from one uh, drug de addicted person okay so from one that uh, drug abuser uh, who has recovered from de addiction if you are asking if you want to assess from his reference you can go to other person and from that other person's reference you can go to other person so this is called as snowball sampling so the process of snowball sampling is like uh, asking the person first person to nominate other person and the second person to nominate other person who are going to have the similar characteristics so until and until the sufficient number of subjects for example if you are doing an 100 subjects if till 100 subjects reached you can stop this process so this merits are it is also cheap simple and cost effective it is like a chain marketing network marketing like that no so the chain referral system is used here which is very easy the technique needs little planning you, you need to plan somewhat but workforce is little and time is uh, little next is demerits so here the researcher has little control over the sampling method representativeness is also not guaranteed again sampling bias is more, more or less the merits and demerits for all the things is more or less same hope this video is clear for you all if you like my video don't forget to like share and subscribe to science easy tech channel my previous videos link i have given in description box suggested end card and i card or you can watch our channel playlist for more nursing research and statistics related videos uh, next video will be on probability sampling techniques which is very very interesting and it is mostly used when you are going to use randomization experimental studies and all you have to use this probability sampling methods okay thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel